Smith. Good morning, sir. Oh, excuse me, sir. Are you sure Mrs. Kruger's eggs haven't been boiled over three minutes? Oh, no, sir. Just two and three quarters. You may serve the breakfast. Be seated, sir. Where are the morning papers? I'm sorry, sir. Miss Phyllis came down and took them. Both of them? Yes, sir. Well, give me some breakfast. I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Marie, I've told you repeatedly, Miss Phyllis prefers her grapefruit sugar. I'm sorry, sir. Now, please don't let it happen again. Is my coffee nice and hot? Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. Oh, but I don't like hot coffee. Oh, my, what am I saying? It's iced coffee I don't like hot. <laughs> Aren't I no silly? Yes, ma'am. Marie, please. Um, Mr. Kruger must have my morning message. You will deliver it, won't you, please? Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, Stump. Good morning, Madge. Good morning, Matthew. Did you see my father this morning? Yes, he's in the dining room now. Oh, if you should ask for me, tell him I'm a little uh, indisposed, will you? Yes, I will. A message from Mrs. Kruger, sir. Oh. Dearest Henry, someone at the bank has gotten my account all mixed up. And the cashier was very impudent when I spoke to him on the phone. Please have your secretary go over my statement, and if I'm overdrawn, make a deposit for me, lovingly, Alice. I wonder if she thinks money grows on tree. Egbert! Yes, sir? When do I get my breakfast? After I've served Mr. James, sir. Is that all he's having? He's feeling rather under the weather, sir. Again? Weather doesn't seem to be agreeing with him lately. <laughs> Well, boys will be boys, sir. It was a celebration at his fraternity house. Oh. Tomato juice, sir. Thank you, Egbert. Well, go ahead. Say it. I have nothing to say, son. It seemed to me that you should do the talking. Why talk about it? You wouldn't understand anyway. Nobody in this house would except maybe Mother and Egbert. James, there are a lot of things we fathers don't understand about our growing sons. But we'd like to, if we had a chance. All right, Hogan. Oh, good morning, Chief. What's good about it? Oh, you must have seen the front page of the Argus this morning. That's what I'd call hidden below the belt. Why, the skunk. And who's Jeffrey Dodd? Name sounds familiar. It ought to. He's been dating your daughter every night. I think he's a reporter on the Argus. Just as I thought. Premeditated frame up to hit at me through Phyllis. I ought to shoot two skunks while I'm at it. You leave him to me, Chief. I got a score to settle with him anyhow. No, no, no. This is a private affair. Why dirty your hands on the rat? Let me take care of him. I'd love it. I'll take care of him myself. Come on. All right. Last longer. You dirty, unprincipled skunk. 
You crook, you blackmailer. There's a sign on my door that says private, Mr. Kruger. Or is your eyesight failing you? I don't care what the sign says. You're going to retract that story you printed about my daughter or else. Or else what, Mr. Kruger? I print the news as I get it and never retract the facts, same as you do. If you don't like to see your daughter's name in my paper, then I think you better keep her out of cafes. Don't try to alibi, McDonald. One of your reporters took my daughter to the rail fence last night. So what? So you could frame her. You hired that chorus girl to slap her so you could take a crack at me. Oh, go on. You're not that important to me. You're just sore because the Argus under my management is cutting down your circulation. That's a lie. Nobody but filth reads your dirty sheet. You've been reading it, haven't you? You're a dirty crook, McDonald. You were never a newspaper man, and printing the news doesn't interest you. You just bought the Argus so you could use the power of the press in your blackmail schemes. This isn't the first time you attacked me by slandering my family, but it'll be the last. If you ever do it again, I'll come gunning for you. Did you hear that, Joan? Yeah. I heard it, Andy. Well, if it isn't Slippery Joe Clary. Right on the beam, Kruger. You'll probably hang by one. Evidently, San Quentin didn't make you any smarter, Joe, because you're right back here sticking out your chin again. What do you mean, sticking out my chin? If you travel around with McDonald, you'll do another stretch in the pen. Yeah? I don't suppose he ever told you how he ducked going up to the big house with you, did he? What are you talking about? No, he just likes to hear himself talk. He knows what I'm talking about. Only he's a little bit embarrassed to admit he double-crossed a pal. You didn't double-cross me, did you, Andy? Of course not. He's just trying to start something. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You, you dope. Just ask him sometime about his powering around with your girl while you were a guest of the state. Get out of my office! I'll get out. Don't forget. I wasn't fooling. Come on. Just a moment, Mr. Kruger. You've got me all wrong. I had nothing to do with framing Phillips. Who are you? I'm Jeffrey Dodd. I took Phyllis out. Oh, yeah. you are, are you? Well, you keep away from Phyllis here after or it won't be healthy for you either. But Mr. Kruger... Just bear that in mind, Junior. given the best years of my life to fighting dishonesty and corruption. Nobody seems to care or even to lift a finger. That's what I've been trying to tell you ever since I came to work for you. You're just a stranger in the family. How do you figure that? Did your family have breakfast with you this morning? No, but... How many times in the last year has your family gone any place with you? None. <laughs> Look, Chief, I, uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but... Uh, but what? Well... The most important thing to a guy is his home ties, and you haven't got any. All your family wants you around for is to have somebody to pay the bills. Yeah. That's the impression I get sometimes. Why don't you go away someplace? Uh, let them shift for themselves. Give them that good old absent treatment. You got something, Mike? Well, what is it, Mr. Kruger? I want to see all department heads. Fellow workers, I'm leaving in a few minutes for my first vacation in five years. And in my absence, you will share the responsibility for publishing the Tribune. You know the policy of the paper. It's all in your hands, my friends. Well, what are you going to do with the appointments I made for you? I'll show you. And you can tell the world that you don't know where I went or when I expect to return because I don't know myself. Come on, Mike. We're on our way. Well, here's the better times, Joe. Better times. You got a nerve of a brass monkey. You couldn't look me in the face after double-crossing me the way you did. I didn't double-cross you, Joe. Well, then what do you call it? 
Just following the advice of my lawyer, that's all. You mean your mouthpiece told you to sing to the DA? Sure. Let that be a lesson to you, Joe. Always hire the best lawyer you can get. I guess maybe you're right. But that don't alibi you for palling around with Myrtle when I was out of circulation. Oh, now don't get sore about a Dane, Joe. Anyway, I thought you and she were washed up. That's a dirty lie. When I see Merle, it ain't gonna be healthy for her. And it ain't gonna be healthy for you right now. Because I'm gonna save Kruger the trouble. Easy, Joe. You better not pull that trigger or you'll hang for it. You don't want to die, do you, Joe? You can't bluff me. Who's gonna know that I did it? You seem to have forgotten about that other murder you committed. The one back east. Huh? Yeah. Maybe now you remember, too, that I caught you in the act. And you begged me to give you a break. I did give you a break, Joe, do you remember? And what did you give me in return? I'll tell you, Joe. A signed confession. Because I figured I'd have use for a guy like you sometime. A confession that's right over there in that safe where the cops will find it in case I should ever get rubbed out. <laughs> Got you take a joke, Andy. I, I was only fooling. I got a little job for you, Joe. Huh? You know, you and I are both going to breathe a lot easier when Kruger's planted under six feet of dirt. Oh, no, Andy, I would Don't be a dimwit. Kruger's never going to let up on us. Besides, if you do the job, then you can have the confession, and you'll be in the clear. How do I know you got it in the safe? You let me have that gun, and I'll prove it to you. Satisfied, Joe? Okay, Andy. It's a deal. Now you're getting smart, Joe. Okay, let's go. to uh, kill game with that revolver, are you, sir? Oh, yes, a revolver is most effective for the kind of game I'm after. Uh, and I'm a crack shot at anything up to 50 yards. Really, sir? <laughs> yes. Uh, you see that uh, clock over there on my writing desk? Yes, sir. Now, if this gun were loaded, I could shoot the minute hand off that clock with ease. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> Famous last words. I, uh, I thought you were bragging, sir. Why, you... Uh, you shot the minute hand right off the clock, just as you said you would. Yes, yeah. that's good shooting, sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, can you imagine what I'd do to a larger object, say, a human target? Yes, the, uh, the thought is alarming, sir. If you, uh, if you want me, you'll, uh, if you need me, you'll send for me, won't you, sir? Very well, Egbert. <laughs> Sir. If the family inquire, where shall I say you've gone? In case they do, which they won't tell them, you don't know. Carry on, Egbert. Cheerio, old boy. Yeah, Chief, don't it seem great to be leaving your troubles behind? You said it, Mike. Let's get going. On the double.
officer. He's got it on him. Yes? I'm from the Superior Garage. I'm supposed to pick up Mr. Kruger's roadster and fix the clutch. Well? Well, it ain't in the garage where it's supposed to be. Right you are, because Mr. Kruger and his chauffeur left about an hour ago. You ain't got no idea when they'll come back, have you? I haven't the faintest idea. Thanks a lot for the help, pal. And look, a big slab of that homemade apple pie is, huh? Don't suppose you knew that Sonic had an addition to the family in Dubai. Ain't our baby boy? Yeah. And Grandma Bradford film broke her hip? And Julie Bowers eloped with that trumpet player down the end. Is that so? Yeah. Oh, and we've got a new state motor cop in the district that you left. Young fellow by the name of Trey. They say he went to G-Man school. Well, I didn't come up here to meet people socially, Mrs. Warnick. As a matter of fact, I don't want anyone to know that I'm up here. So, here's a little hush money. Oh, you know what I mean. Bad sakes, Mr. Kruger. You don't need to pay me to keep still about you. I know, I know. But just in case anyone should inquire, I'll expect you to do $5 worth of fibbing, see? Oh, well, you insist. You don't think five bucks will button her lip, do you? I hope so. By the way, Mrs. Swanigan, have you got any quick lime? Yeah, a ten pound sack. Good. Give me two sacks, please. Okay. Oh, here you are. And that'll be a dollar even with the tax. That's fine, thank you. And don't forget what I told you. you didn't see me tonight. Can't I even tell Mr. Trigg, the state motor car? Certainly not. My coming up here is none of his business. Okay, Mr. Kruger. I don't know nothing. Good. She ain't kidding. Good night, Mrs. Warnicker. Good night. Take it easy now, Warnicker. Good night, Hogan. Hello, Desmond. Hello, Mike. Hi, Desmond. Well, why didn't you let me know you was a coming up here and I'd have had dinner all ready for you? I had a few more important things to think about. But you can cook up something right now and... Okay. Take these in with you, will you? Sure. What are you sniffing about, Fritzy? Think you smell a rabbit in there? No, oh, there's no rabbit in there. No. All right, I'll show you. Come on, Fritz. Come, come. Fritz. Fritz. Come
Uh, did you turn down the heaters in the bedrooms? Yes, sir. What's he carrying Fritzy around for? Uh, I thought you didn't like dogs. Nonsense. Fritzy and I are old friends, aren't we, Fritzy? <laughs> uh, go ahead and play. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what are you planning with doing with that quick lime you brought? Dispose of our garbage. What else? Well, we've never had to use it before. We've just thrown the garbage out and let the deer come down and get it. Oh. Oh, well, that is very sanitary. Okay, I'll use the quick lime if you say so. But I could take the garbage and dump it into one of them deep canyons up the road a mile or so. Deep canyons, huh? Yeah, nothing ever gets down in there but snow, so there won't be no smell. Yes. That would do it. Make us some coffee, will you, Desmond? Glad to. Only take a minute. Oh, uh, Chief, I was just thinking maybe I'd better go out and finish unpacking the roaster, huh? Oh, there's plenty of time, Mike. You can do it tonight sometime. Uh, sit down. Hey, what's eating you tonight, Chief? Hmm? You're as jittery as a grasshopper. Oh, well, I... I was thinking about an experience of a friend of mine. Uh... uh what would you do, Mike, if sometime you came home and you found a... <laughs> you found a dead man in your closet? <laughs> Call the police? Yeah. Oh, yes, well, that's what my friend decided to do until he suddenly remembered that he'd once publicly threatened the life of the dead man. Oh, well, that's different. In a case like that, I'd get rid of the corpse so quicker to make your head swim. You would. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what my friend decided to do. I'll take a shower. What a character. Well, you certainly brewed that in a hurry. Well, it's that good kind of coffee. <laughs> All right, what do you want? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let you out, Fritzy. Here you go, boy. Fritzy, what you have? <laughs> There's nothing there for you, Fritzy. Look, I'm not lying to you. There's nothing in there for you. <laughs> Look, I'll show you. See? <laughs> Snooping around here, you have a noose right around the boss's neck. Now watch that, will you? Ah, that was just what I needed. Thanks, Desmond. Yeah, that's what I always say. Good cup of coffee just fixes you up. While you're getting supper, I'll take a shower. Okay. <laughs> Why, it really feels good, doesn't it? Huh. Now you're a carrying Fritzy. What's the idea? Afraid he get his feet dirty? Oh, no. I just picked him up to get him out of the way while I was unpacking the rest of the stuff out of the back of the roadster. He's the snoopiness mutt I ever saw. Hey, what car is that? Well, it's Mr. Kruger driving the roadster. Yeah. Now, why did he go away without saying something? <laughs> I, uh, don't know. That's funny.
up, buddy? No, no thanks. When you passed me back there doing better than 50 miles an hour, I thought you were going for help of some kind. Oh, no, no, I... I was just taking a little airing. Was I going that fast? Yeah. You wouldn't by any chance be thinking about taking a jump into this canyon, would you? Oh, no. No, of course not. Do I look like the type that would jump off the deep end? <laughs> Looks are often deceiving. I've seen some harmless looking individuals who were murderers. I noticed you're trying to get this compartment open. I'll help you. Oh, that's all right. I, I... No, that doesn't make no oh, sense. I, I changed my mind, officer. Oh, forget it. Oh, look, look, please, I... What's the matter? What have you got in there? Oh, nothing. Just some tools, spare parts. Then it won't make any difference if I look in it, will it? <laughs> What's funny? Nothing much. <laughs> uh, here's my operator's license in case you thought my behavior was a little strange. Oh, so you're Henry Kruger, publisher of the Tribune. Yeah. You own that hunting lodge up on Summit Road. That's me. And I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Kruger. I'm Jimmy Trigg. I'm glad to meet you, Trigg. Come up and see me sometime. Thanks, I will. Mr. Kruger, take it a little easy on that throttle, will you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now go on, good. Get away from there now. What is it? What is it, Desmond? Something terrible has happened. It... Where? In the house. All I right, was... all right, all right. Let's Just go. coming in. It's in there, in the, in the box. What's in there? Oh, I don't know, sir. Don't say, but what's cooking? What goes on? A dead body. I saw it when I went to put the wood in. Yeah? I think you've been on that hooch again. Oh, no, I haven't. I tell you, I saw it. If you don't believe me, just raise the lid. Well, I'll just relax. Take it easy. We'll have a look. Oh, well, it was in there. I tell you, I saw it. Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, then I think you owe Mr. Kruger an explanation. How come there'd be a dead body in this wood box? I, I, I don't know. You don't think I killed anybody, do you? No, of course not. Uh, but I haven't killed anybody. Honest, I haven't. Well, maybe you just imagined you saw a body. Oh, Desmond, you've had a drink. <laughs> of course, if you did, we can call in the law. Uh, I, I guess maybe I was just seeing things. Well, let's forget about it. Better cook up something. I'm starved. I want to see you, Hogan. Look, Desmond, you better lay off that canned heat. <laughs> See what I saw in that wood box? Huh? You did? Oh, you're right. There's something awful funny going on around here. Uh, Mike, I was thinking... I don't just what you mean, Chief. Uh, look, I'm wise to what you bought that quicklime for. Oh, I was... What are you talking about? That body that Desmond found in the wood box. I put it there after the dog found it in the back of your roadster. Mike... Uh, oh, Chief, don't worry. I'll keep your secret. After the way that McDonald's slandered your family, I don't blame you for shooting him. Are you crazy? I didn't shoot McDonald. You didn't? No. Well, you threatened to, so naturally no. I... No. Whoever did it put his body in my car. I've been frantic ever since I discovered it. I didn't know what to do. That's why I made up that story about a friend. And by the way... 
Where did you go after you left me yesterday? Oh, why, I just went home to pack my suitcase. Hey, now, wait a minute. You don't think I killed him, do you? Did you? No. Honest, I didn't, Chief. Oh, Mike, we're in a bad jam. What are we going to do? Well, there's only one thing left to do. Is to throw it down one of them deep ravines and let the snow cover it up. What's that you're going to dump down one of the ravines? What did you say, officer? I said, what's that you're going to throw down a ravine? Oh, oh, we were talking about disposing of our garbage. Yeah, we are... Uh, <laughs> Can I fix you a drink, officer? No, thanks. I don't drink when I'm on duty. And I'm going to be on duty all night. I'll be seeing you. Oh, I don't like the way he said that. No. I never... Mr. Swanica should tell him about the hush money. Are you sure Mr. Kruger didn't come up here? Mrs. Hogan, his chauffeur's wife, told me he did. You see... I'm a bank messenger, and I was supposed to deliver some money to him. Well, that's different. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Don't tell him I told you. But he's up at the lodge. He doesn't want anybody to know. Don't worry. I won't tell him. Where is the lodge? Right down the road. First turn to the right, second house. Thanks for the information. No, that's all right. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Trigg. What can I do for you? What time was Mr. Kruger in here? Mr. Kruger? Yeah. You sold him some quick lime, didn't you? Oh, well, uh, yes, come to think of it. Did he uh, act at all strange when he was here? What I mean is, uh, did he appear worried about anything? No, he was just his usual self, only... Only what? Well, uh, I'd better not say anything after him giving me the hush money. Hush money? What for? He came up here for a rest, and he said he didn't want people dropping in on him. Oh. Something very strange going on up here, and I'm going to find out what it is. Good night, Mrs. Swanica. Good night, Mr. Trigg. that motor cop's coming back again. He never hung around here before. Oh, uh, maybe he forgot something. Hope you're right, Mike. So what? So what? What kind of a question is that? Your poor father is probably lying unconscious in a hospital somewhere, and no one knows who he is? Oh, Mother, don't be ridiculous. He always carries identification. Sure he does. Identification? Don't be silly. The identification was burned up in the fire. What fire? Well, maybe his gasoline tank exploded. Calm yourself, darling. Hey, Bert. Yes, sir. Did Dad phone here last evening? No, sir, but he was here. Oh, he was? Yes, madam, at 9 o'clock. He left at once with Hogan. Oh, uh, did he say anything? Did, did he say where he was going? No, madam, and he inferred it was none of my business. Oh, my. That doesn't sound like Henry. If you'll pardon me, madam, he's been acting in a very peculiar manner. Really? Oh, my. Egbert, call Father's office. Yes, madam. Good morning, Mr. Kruger's office. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry. I have no idea where he went. Out of a clear sky yesterday morning, he called the staff in the office and announced that he's going to take a vacation. And that was all he said? Well, well thank you very much, Miss Patterson. Thank you. 
go, madam. No, 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 no. You must tell me the truth. Is he badly hurt? He isn't hurt at all, madam. He's merely gone on a vacation. A vacation? Well, he can't do that to us. Has he no consideration for our feelings? Why should he? When have we had consideration for his? Why, Jane? Well, it's a fact. He's just a meal ticket around here. Why, how can you say such things? He's right, Mother. Of course I am. Why, not one of us remembered him on Father's Day. We didn't? Really? <gasps> oh, my word, who's that? It's probably Jeffrey, Mother. Oh, oh really, I, I, I just, I, I'm so upset, I, uh, I think I'll have some bacon and eggs, then. Yes, madam, bacon and eggs. Yeah, oh, what am I saying? How dare you suggest such a thing? Why, it's positively revolting. Bacon and eggs, my word. It. Get my smelling salts, please. Your smelling salts. Well. Hello, Jim. Good morning, Mrs. Kruger. Oh, oh, good morning, Jeffrey. Oh, my dear boy, I am so upset. I know, Phyllis was telling me. Oh. Mother, you might as well prepare yourself for another shock. Oh, You tell her, Jeff. That's pretty bad. Yesterday morning, Mr. Kruger threatened Mr. McDonald for publishing that awful picture of Phyllis in his paper. And now McDonald's disappeared. Oh, oh. Your smelling sauce, madam. Oh, thank you. Uh, I couldn't help overhearing what Mr. Dodds said just now. Last night I was serving Mr. Kruger some coffee upstairs, and I found him practicing with his revolver. Oh, my. To my dismay, he shot the handle of a boudoir clock. And when I complimented him on his extraordinary shooting, he said with a chuckle, what I could do with a larger object, say a human target. Oh, my goodness, how awful. Now, Mother, don't cross your bridges till you get to them. Bridges? Oh! Oh, then he wasn't hurt in the fire. No, he, he fell off the bridge. Oh! Suppose that motorcycle policeman is still following us? Why, certainly. That guy is so snoopy, he'd follow us all day long for fear he'd miss something. Yeah, I wish I had told him the truth last night. Are you kidding? If you had, right now you'd be wishing you were out of jail. Don't forget you threatened the cool McDonald. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But don't worry, Chief. <clears throat> Look, you and Desmond park yourselves here, see? And in the meanwhile, while that cop is watching you behind some tree, I'll take a shortcut back to Lodge and dispose of the corpus delecti. I hope it works. What now, Mr. Cooper? I told you you wouldn't find any duck in this region. All right, all right. You just prepare some lunch. I'll tell you what. I'll go chop some wood. You take it easy, Chief. And uh, don't strain yourself, will you, Desmond? Thanks. Oh. <laughs> well, back from your hunting trip already? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I mean, no. I just, what do you think? We went clear up there and we found out we forgot our frying pan. Hey, you can't cancel out a frying pan. Wouldn't be in there, would it? Oh. oh, there you are. That's my pan, huh? What are you going to fry in that? My ducks? <laughs> what else is we went up there for? Duck, well, uh, make yourself at home, officer. Huh? I'll be seeing you.
Egbert. Egbert, where are you? Oh, my goodness. Why you startle me, Egbert? Oh, isn't it lovely? Uh, you, Henry. Uh, Henry. You. There's no one here, Egbert. They're probably out gunning for something, madam. Now, please, please, do not use that word, gun. I, I, I don't like it. it. It upsets me. I, I think hunting is positively brutal. I'm sorry, madam. Shall I go out and hunt? I mean, shall I go out and search for them? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't bother, don't bother. I'd much rather surprise him. Thank you. Ah, uh, you, yeah, Henry. Ah, uh -huh, darling, where are you? Yes, madam, at once. Uh, no, thanks, ma'am. I never indulge while I'm on duty. Oh. Oh, you don't. Uh, now, will Abbott get him a soft drink? Uh, yes, madam. Uh, this way, sir, please. Uh, uh, thank you so much, officer. Uh, thank you. Oh. Oh. <gasps> what am I doing? I... Uh, if you'll be seated, sir, I'll, uh, I'll see what we have on ice. No, don't bother. I really haven't time. Thanks just the same. Hey, uh, looks like that copper's crammed and left all the lights on. Yeah, but where did he go? That's what interests me. Oh, don't worry, Chief. I got a plan of mine. Good evening, sir. Egbert. How on earth did you get here? Mrs. Kruger's here, sir. You mean, you mean she's here now? Yes, sir. I'll tell her where you are. Holy mackerel. How are we going to get his nibs out of the house now? You mean, how are we going to get him out of Mrs. Kruger's bedroom? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me he's in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, fine. I'll have to keep her out of the bedroom so that you can get it out of there. Come on. Uh, not just a minute. What am I going to do with it? That's your problem. We haven't got much time, time Mike. And Darling. I... Tell us. Oh, my uh, dear. Why did you run away? Why did you come up here all by yourself? Well, uh, how, how, how did you know I was here? Oh, uh, Mrs. Hogan told us. Oh, my dear, why didn't you let me know you needed a vacation? I'd have canceled all my engagements, everything to be with you. Oh, well, I... I, I didn't want to spoil your plans. Oh, I... my dear, my plans. As if my plans compared with your happiness. Why, Henry, how could you think such a thing? Uh, darling, I... I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Uh, come along to my room. Or, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, uh, I want to show you something, Alice. Uh, uh, you too, Egbert. Well, what did you want to show us, Henry? Oh, uh, there he is, my dear. Isn't he a cute little fella? Well, have you forgotten that I've known Fritzy ever since he was a tiny puppy? Oh, that's what I thought, too, but... That isn't Fritzy. Oh, no. No. Fritzy fell down a deep ravine and broke his neck. <laughs> well, he certainly looks like Fritzy. Oh, naturally. Naturally. It's uh, his brother, Blitzy. Oh. Well, hello, Mrs. Kruger. I'm glad oh. to see you. How are you, Egbert? How do you do? Hello, Desmond. I'm tired of being tied up, ain't you? You want to get out and chase some rabbits, don't you, Fritzy? Uh, did you say Fritzy? Of course he said Fritzy. Fritzy broke his neck, remember? 
Oh, my dear, I'm, I'm sure you are not feeling well. You look awfully tired and overworked. Nonsense. Never felt better in my life. <laughs> I know what. I'll mix a drink for all of us. Mm. You'll pardon me, ma'am. I think the master's a bit balmy. Balmy? <gasps> oh. my love. Uh, I want to talk to you, dear. Will you come along with me now? Of course. Oh, uh, my dear, there's, there's so much I want to talk to you about. I... Uh, how long has the master been showing you signs of schizophrenia? A ske what are you talking about? Mr. Kruger, you must have noticed his extraordinary behavior lately. Oh, sure, that. But that's why I talked him into taking a vacation. Oh. Um, Henry, can you ever forgive me for neglecting you so? Oh, let's just forget about it. Oh, you know, I'm so glad I came up here. If we had only had this understanding before, then you wouldn't have gotten into all this serious trouble. Trouble? Well, well what do you mean, Alice? Oh, darling, you don't have to hide anything from me. I'll stand by you no matter what happens. Uh, but tell me, dear, uh, how can you bear to sit on him? <laughs> Sit on whom? Uh, the dead man in the chest. Alice, are you sure you're feeling all right? Why, how, how, how can there be a dead man in that chest? Oh, oh he's in there all right. I, I, I saw him. Why, you didn't see any dead man in there. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, Henry, don't you dare open that lid. I'll see it if you do. You see, it was just your imagination. <laughs> It was in there. I, 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 I saw him. No, darling. What you and I need is a good long rest. A sort of a second honeymoon. Oh, darling, how right you are. Now, who the devil is that? Quite a place you have here. We like it. Why, it's, it's James and Phyllis and, and her boyfriend, Mr. Dodd. Oh, why, Henry, we'll have a family reunion. Won't that be nice? Hello, Egbert. Miss Phyllis? The luggage is in the car. Yes, Miss. Jeff, you'll bunk with me. Come on, I'll show you. All right. All right, Miss Kruger. Yes, Hogan? I, uh... I wouldn't go into my room if I were you, you see. Uh, that Desmond hasn't had a chance to make it up. We, we weren't expecting you. That's uh, all right, Hogan. I'll take care of it. Do we... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Thank you, Egbert. Where shall I put it? Right there on the floor. Mike. Mike. More trouble. What's the matter? Kid's just arrived. Yeah, I know. Well, what did you do with his nibs? It's in Phyllis's room. Oh. What? Yeah. Uh, she's coming now. I I'll try to stall her off while you get it out of there. Yeah, but boss, we're running out Mike, of Mike, go on. Dad. Hello, darling. I'm sorry. We've been treating you like a stepfather. Oh, that's all right. It was really I who treated you like stepchildren. <laughs> well, did you have a good trip? Mm -hmm. Who else came up with you? Jimmy and Jeffrey Dodd. I'd like you to meet him, Dad. Oh, glad to know you, Jeff. Well, the same here, Mr. Cougar. I hope you're not holding that Argus News photo against me. Oh, that? Certainly not. Uh, I was just blowing off some steam. <laughs> my bark is worse than my bite. Well, I... I think I'll make a couple of drinks, huh? I'd like to talk to you, Dad. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But that can wait. I'll make a few drinks first. I'd like to talk to you now. Oh. All right. <laughs> Help yourself, Jeff. It's right over there. Oh, thanks. I will. Come on, dear. All right. Now, 
tell me about it. I know everything, Dad. That's a pretty broad statement, darling. You know everything about what? I can understand you defending the honor of your family, but how can you joke about it? Joke? Joke about what? Your, your crime. What are you talking about? Oh, don't try to pretend, Dad. Your secret is safe with me. I'll do anything to save you. See? Haven't you been overdoing the nightlife a little? No, Dad. It's in my closet. All right. Let's look. <laughs> you see? Nothing in there but some coat hangers. But there was a man's body in there. I saw it. I'm afraid your nerves are in bad shape. I think you ought to see Dr. Trago for a checkup. In fact, I'm going to insist on it. Oh, oh Dad. I love you so much. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see who belongs to this. A.C. McDonald, 88 West Main Street, Los Angeles, California. McDonald? Holy smoke, he's the publisher who's missing, isn't he? Sure he is. And according to that report from L.A. police, this fellow Kruger threatened to kill him only yesterday morning. I knew there was something phony about that guy when I stopped him last night. Well, what are we waiting for? We're not waiting. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim? Why, Henry, you old meanie. <laughs> Why, it, it, it's positively exasperating the way you pick up every discard I'm uh, So you always have such phenomenal luck? Only at cards. <laughs> huh? I want to see you. It's very important. Oh, sure. Oh, come on. Deal another hand. I'll be back. Mm, what's wrong now? What now? I think we're going to have company. Well, go on out in the storm, say nobody's home. But you can't do that, Chief. Why not? Because I think our friend Officer Trigg has brought up some of his playmates. Oh, I see. Well, we can't play not at home with the law, can we? Uh-uh. Let them in when they come. Poor boy. Did you hide a bone in my bedroom? Come on now, boy. There are no bones in there. Shut up, boy. Quiet. What the dickens are you barking at? Shut up. Draper, nobody leaves here. <laughs> Hello, Trig. What's on your mind? Mr. Kruger, you're under arrest. Under oh, arrest? Dad. What's he talking about? And so are your chauffeur and caretaker. Now that you've had your joke, how about a little refreshment? I'm not joking, Mr. Kruger. No? No. Well, what's the charge, officer? Suspicion of murder. <gasps> Why, that's perfectly ridiculous. Henry, you wouldn't murder anyone, would you? Who am I supposed to have murdered? The man you threatened to kill yesterday morning, A.C. McDonald. You mean, you think I did that? I do. Now, if you'll just show us where you've hidden the body. If you can't produce anything better than my threat to support your charges, I'll tell you nothing. Very well, Mr. Kruger. We'll find that body. Make no mistake about that. Wait a minute, officer. My father didn't kill McDonald. I did. You did? What's that you're saying? Well, I might as well confess, Dad. I killed him because... Well, he asked for it when he printed what he did about Phyllis. Don't you believe him, officer? He's obviously trying to shield me. It's a nice gesture, son, but...
story just won't hold up. Oh, yes, it will. I can prove it. I'll show you where I hid the body. Where? Now we're getting somewhere. Just follow me. What in the world? What's the meaning of all this? I don't know, but it doesn't look good. It's locked. Somebody's in there. We got him, Trig. Nice work, fellas. Bring him inside. We'll see where he fits in this picture. Do any of you know this bird? We caught him lambing out of your bedroom window. Sure, I know him. He's Joe Clary, McDonald's partner in crime. What are you doing up here in the mountains, Joe? Wouldn't you like to know? I could guess. You shot McDonald and put his body in the luggage compartment of my car, didn't you? You'd have a hard time proving it. Not so hard. McDonald turned state's evidence and let you take an extortion rap all by yourself, didn't he? He had a better motive than that. Look what I found on McDonald's body. McDonald was holding this confession over your head, wasn't he, Joe? All right, all right, I called him. But the double cross on Rat had it coming to him. Get him out of here. Mr. Kruger. I could arrest you and your two employees for obstructing justice. But considering all the mitigating circumstances, I'm not going to take you in. But you'll have to explain those circumstances to the judge who tries the case. I know, and uh, I owe you an apology, Trigg. But you try finding a body in your car sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine how you felt. But the next time you find a body, will you notify the police and let them worry about it? Oh, I hope that won't be necessary. And drop around sometime. Um, when you're not on duty. <laughs> Thanks, I will. Good night. Good night. Dad, I'm awfully ashamed of myself. I really thought you'd kill somebody. Oh, Henry, dear, can you ever forgive me? I, I thought so, too. Well, you know, for a while, I thought I did myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my dear. You know, it's, it's awfully nice up here, and, and a vacation would be lovely, but... But after all, Henry, there's no place like home. Let's pack up and forget we ever came up here. You're right. There is no place like home. <laughs> Yes, sir. There's no place like home. 